Earth is flat, the moon landing was fake, and Pikachu is actually Ash's dad. These are what you call conspiracy theories. And today we're checking out the top 10 craziest Pokemon conspiracy theories of all time. Number 10. The anime was supposed to be one season. This one is less of a conspiracy, but more of an unknown fact. As you may know, we have over 1,000 episodes in Pokemon That is now. insane. But imagine if all we got was the original series where he loses the league and that's it. No more Ash Ketchum. That was the CEO of Pokemon Ishihara's original plan with the anime. But after the delay of Gold and Silver, we got Orange Islands as a filler series and the rest is history. Ooh, guys, I have something to admit. Even though I am a Pokemon master, a Pokemon connoisseur, I, uh, I, I actually haven't watched too much of the anime. And if there's over a thousand episodes, I don't know if I could ever be convinced to watch that much because that is a lot of TV. But Pokemon is like the, the Pokemon is like the greatest game ever. So I'm really glad that the, the Pokemon is like the greatest game ever. So I'm really glad that the show didn't end after one season. Number nine, Ditto was a failed attempt at making Mew. Ooh. This is a pretty popular theory that has been around ever since the beginning of Pokemon. We all know the story of the scientists that were studying Mew who wanted to make the strongest Pokemon in the world and they ended ended up creating Mewtwo. However, was Ditto a failed clone of Mewtwo? Cause there's no way a perfect Mewtwo was created on the first try. I mean, let's look at the similarities. They are both pink, they mm. both can transform into any Pokemon, Ooh. they both look kinda slimy, and they even share the same shiny color. Hmm. Mewtwo was created on Cinnabar Island, where guess who was running all over the place? Yes. Ditto. Ditto. That means they must have failed many attempts, and this might be the reason it is super common in the games as well. To me- Well, the thing is, if you keep failing at cloning a Pokemon, why would it create the exact same Pokemon over and over and over again? Like, why would it create Ditto a thousand times and then uh, out of nowhere just create the perfect Pokemon of Mewtwo? Like, you would think that a lot of the other clones wouldn't just be Ditto, they would just be, like, other horrible versions of Mewtwo, essentially. But, I mean, what are you saying? It does make a lot of sense. And I wonder if Pokemon will ever come out and, like, confirm any of these theories, because I could definitely see that one being true. This seems like too much evidence suggesting that Ditto is, in fact, a clone Pokemon from Mew or Mewtwo. Number 8. Orcanine is a legendary Pokemon. Ooh, Honestly, I've heard I would this one have loved for this to be true, even though it makes absolutely no sense. Many people speculate whether or not Arcanine was really meant to be a legendary because of its unusually high stats. Some suggested that Arcanine was part of the legendary trio. Even in the Pokedex, it says Arcanine is in fact a legendary Pokemon. Yeah, that right there, I feel like is the most obvious evidence that Arcanine could actually be a legendary. I forget exactly what the theory is, but I'm pretty sure that there is a theory that it has to do with the legendary beasts because in generation two, the legendary Pokemon Pokemon are the beasts and low key Arcanine kind of looks like one of the beasts like he could be Entei but instead for generation one they decided to have three legendary birds instead of three legendary beasts but they probably already created Arcanine so they kind of just tossed him in there that's my theory at least and we all can't forget that time when we saw that picture in the Pokemon oh, yeah. Center of episode two exactly see that's kind of what I was talking about is look there's Boltrace, Articuno, Zapdos and Arcanine so clearly, he's supposed to be like the fourth legendary of Generation 1. Pokemon must have made some last minute choices, probably since it wouldn't make any sense for there to be three legendary birds and then just a dog. Exactly. Yeah, from now on, I'm calling Arcanine a legendary Pokemon. Number seven, the original ending for the anime. The original ending for the anime was quite weird. This ending was written by Takashi Shudo, who was the chief writer of the Pokemon anime from 1997 to 2002. His idea for the ending was to have Ash as an old man looking back at the past when he was a little boy traveling around the world of Pokemon and making friends along his journey. So the whole thing would have been just memories? No, dude, you can't add it that way. However, old man Ash apparently doesn't have these experiences with friends as he used to, and his thinking about this turns back the clock and we get Ash being yelled at by his mom waking him up. And here we have the first episode. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, what? but the entire I'm point confused. of this was to show the meaning of existence itself and how to coexist with others again. Not exactly the most fitting for Pokemon, especially if you consider its primary audience, but honestly, I'd be down for an ending like that. Number six, why is Ash still 10? There are many conspiracy theories. What the heck is that picture? That is the most cursed picture I've ever seen. Is that actually like a frame in the anime? What is that? Why is Pikachu so tall? Out there that explain why Ash is still 10. Something it's because the anime has slowed time where everything ages at a very slow rate. Others think he has arbitrary age 
age, which means, for example, when you reach 10, this is a milestone rather than a sign of growth. Like how all adults in Pokemon are 20 and all old people are 50. Even though Ash should be at least 25, he hasn't earned the position of more than 10. Lastly, and this one is my favorite, and that is Ash's eternal youth. And this one basically means he can live forever. I think it's because he saw Ho in the first episode, and in Ho's Pokedex, it states that if anyone sees its wings, it grants them eternal happiness. Whoa. And Ash's eternal happiness is being 10. Wait, that is actually the coolest conspiracy theory so far. That is sick. I have seen many a ho -oh in my time, so hopefully I get blessed with eternal happiness as well. But we all know it's because Ash is Pokemon's second mascot and he needs to be young for their audience. Number that five, is true. people eat Pokemon. Is this really a conspiracy theory? Because in the episode where Ash is on the big boat, we can clearly see him eating chicken and whatever that is. Yeah, but maybe there's just chicken. Maybe there's just chicken in the Pokemon world. Who knows? We know that animals don't exist in the anime. So okay, what type of meat is know. that? Uh, vegan. It's vegan meat. It's vegan meat, bro. Something's going on here. And here we see them obviously looking at a chopped up Magikarp. Oh, so they must eat Pokemon. I mean... Who knows what they put in those bowls of Pokemon food? That's not Brock's homemade cooking without a little Geo, dude. Number four, Cubone and Kangaskhan right. are related. At oh. first, this may sound a little strange, but I've never heard this one before. I've heard conspiracy theories of Cubones and like Charmanders being related, but I haven't heard this one. Trust me, once you see the image, it all makes sense. Cubone, as we know, where's the skull of its dead mom? That's cool and all, but why is it oddly shaped like a Kangaskhan? Kangaskhan even carries a little dude in his pouch that is also <laughs> oddly shaped like Whoa. Cubone. But this is where it gets a little weird because mathematically, those look like horns and Kangaskhan has ears and the eyes are a little too far backward. However, yeah. in Pokemon Evolution, body shapes are different. Maybe with the Pokemon dies, the skull changes a bit to match with the baby Kangaskhan's head. I don't know, man. This evidence is stacking up and I think this is a cross Pokemon Evolution. I actually disagree with that. It doesn't really make any sense that when a Kangaskhan dies, its head shape changes to match the one of the baby. But here is an actual theory that I think is totally true, is that Cubones are Charmanders. And here is why. I'm not even saying that they're related. I'm saying that they're the exact same Pokemon. But a Cubone is a Charmander if the Charmander's parent, aka the Charizard, dies before it's able to light its tail. So, for example, right, picture baby Cubone born, mom dies instantly, it never lights the Charmander or, Ma or Cubone's tail. And so, Cubone takes the Charizard head, puts it on its own. Because look, that looks like a Charizard skull. So, I'm saying that this is actually a Charmander with a Charizard head or a Charizard skull on its head. And because the Charizard mother never lit its tail, it is a ground type Pokemon. Number three, the Pokemon War. This one's gotta be my personal favorite on the list, but it all started when Lieutenant Surge said there was supposedly a big Pokemon War. The war that he's Ooh. referring to dates a little before Gary was born, and this theory would explain why there aren't many father figures in Pokemon. This war was very big, claiming many human and Pokemon Pokemon lives, which is nothing new in Pokemon we have seen death before. The war was fought by humans and Pokemon alike, as well as some man-made weapons of destruction. Gary's dad could have died fighting in this war, which explains why he was raised by Professor Oak. Again, I feel like that makes perfect sense, and I would honestly love to see a giant Pokemon war in the games or in the show. Number two, Ash can- mm, That would be really sick if there was a giant Pokemon war. Obviously, there's like millions of battles that happen, but I don't know if I've ever seen like a thousand Pokemon versus a thousand Pokemon. Ditchum in a coma. This is the most darkest theory what? by far, because if true, then all of Ash's accomplishments are for nothing and all of your childhood is ruined. People think that in the first episode when Ash gets attacked by a horde of Spearow and Pikachu uses thunder that creates a big explosion, it knocks Ash out and he falls into a coma. Everything we see from then on when he wakes up is all in Ash's head. This could explain the reason of why Ash doesn't age because he's been in this coma for over 25 years. This could also explain why Ash can't die in the anime because it's all a dream. If true, then everything would be so pointless and stupid, but kind of cool, but still stupid. Pretty much the whole anime would have been for nothing and no kid watching Pokemon wants to see their hero wake up from a coma at the end of the series. Although respectfully, this might be the worst theory so far. I hate it. It just doesn't really make any sense. Like, why would they do that? <laughs> 
And also, can you even have dreams when you're in a coma? I thought you were like, when you're in a coma, you're like almost like brain dead. Like you can't even dream. And you're just like laying there, you know, with nothingness. Isn't that, is that accurate or no? So that would be the craziest ending of any TV show of all time. Number one, who and where is Ash's father? Ooh, I saved this one for last one. since it's a classic. I mean, all of these are classics, but the real OG that is still being talked about to this day is the question, who is Ash's father and where is he? The most popular theory that I I heard is it's Giovanni, the head oh! of Team Rocket. Giovanni and Professor Oak actually used to be friends before they went their separate ways. This matters because this might be the reason why Professor Oak is so close to Ash. It's the good son realizes his dad is evil cliche, but I would love to see that. Father Wait, I didn't know that Professor Oak and Giovanni were boys like that. How, I feel like he, he, he said that as if it was like common knowledge. Am I supposed to know that? What the heck? That is crazy. The problem is that Ash's mob would have found out by now and so would Professor Oak. To me, it seems that this would be too unlikely of a coincidence, even for Pokemon. Well, maybe they do know and they're just not telling Ash because they don't want him to know that his father is secretly very evil. Another theory is that Pikachu is Ash's dad, which sounds ridiculous. What? And it's confirmed that Pikachu is not in fact Ash's dad, as we've seen okay. from the first episode of Pokemon Journeys. So who is it? What? We know Ash's dad is confirmed in the anime because of the original series, episode two, where Delia confirmed it. However, she never stated who it was, but she said that he was still on his journey. This means that he is alive and didn't die in the Pokemon War, but left the house to become a Pokemon master. I he definitely left the house to get some milk, and he never came back. So you're telling me though that there's over 1,000 episodes of Pokemon and Ash never finds his dad? How is that even possible? I don't think Ash's dad is a character we have seen in the anime yet, but is one we will maybe see at the end of Ash's journey where they battle. What do you think? I'm pretty sure Ash is no longer the main character in Pokemon and they moved on from him. But I don't think that's going to be true. But anyway, let me know if you think any of these conspiracy theories are actually true in the comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure to hit the like button and click right here to watch another awesome video.